Hello everyone, welcome to this live event on unboxing the Arcus. I believe the the clock has just passed 2 p.m. here where we are in Gothenburg, Sweden. So let's kick this off. My name is Magnus. Um, I'm here with my colleague, Carl. Uh, he's uh, standing by on the chat to answer any questions you, you may have. Just to get you started, um, you have a control panel uh, that I think is hidden uh, in the default view. So you can click the arrow to expand it. Uh, you can enter full screen mode. Uh, you have a place to type your questions. So don't hesitate to ask if, uh, if you have any questions uh, along the way. So either Kalle will, will answer you directly, um, or if, uh, if it's a good question that is uh, interesting for everybody, uh, we'll bring it up live. So let's uh, warm up um, a bit. You have a, a hand uh, icon in the toolbar. So what I'm very interested about is how many of you have used a Mikus or an Oka system in the past? Please press the raise hands uh, button now if you have. Okay, thank you. It looks like about half of you have. Uh, so that's great. Uh, you have a head start for the rest of you. Uh, Nice to have you here. This is what we'll go uh, through today. Uh, we'll start with the with the unboxing event. We'll continue with an overview of the different models that we launch. We launch four different cameras. We will look closer at the Arcus Protected, so the all-weather camera. And we'll finish off with um, some help and guidance in, in how to choose uh, the most proper camera for your uh, for your need. But now let me switch to a live view. Here we go. I hope you all can see me now. So we are here at. Uh, the studio in Gothenburg. So we have a 200 square meter studio. Uh, right now we're focusing on uh, on just one of the tables here, um, where I will uh, show you what we uh, what we'll be looking at today. So here we go. Here's your brand new Arcus camera. Uh, it may come uh, in a pack package like this, or it can also arrive in a case like this. So this is obviously very useful if you have a portable system that you set up in, uh, in multiple locations. So here you have room for four cameras, nicely stacked away and protected. But this case right here contains what I want to show you today. So there we go. There's the camera. Let me get that unpacked and let me tuck this away. So here we are. This is what it looks like. So what we have here is a uh, very sleek and sober front, uh, all covered uh, in a filter glass. Everything except for the corner down here uh, that houses an uh, OLED uh, display, primarily used to indicate the camera number, uh, which is very helpful to, to correlate a camera in the software uh, to a camera uh, on, in, in your studio. On the back here, we have connectors. Uh, we will look closer at, at those. Uh, in the bottom here, we have uh, the tripod mount. So as you can expect, it contains uh, your regular tripod mount. It's a quarter inch, but it also packs a very useful thing. Um, so this camera has a built-in quick release plate. So I will show you how that works. So here's your uh, your regular tripod. Uh, up here we have the quick release plates. 
that I have here. So this is normally what I attach to my camera. But with the Arcus, I can put that to the side. I take the camera like this and simply put it uh, straight onto the tripod. Small thing, very useful. Um, and those running around looking for those missing quick release plates is something you don't have to bother with with this one. Further, um, if you are familiar with the Mikus camera, uh, you recognize this. So this is the dual uh, power and gigabit Ethernet connectors that we use. And with the daisy chain setup, this allows you to power uh, a series of cameras, uh, one from one connecting to the other. Uh, it works like this. So this is a power injector I have here. To this port, I have connected power. This one is gigabit ethernet straight to the computer. And this guy here goes to the cameras. So what I simply do is hook this up like that. And now LEDs are lit on the back. So LEDs to indicate power and to indicate that uh, there's a link active. On the front, it might be a bit difficult to see in the camera view here, but what you now see uh, in a very sober way, the edges around this black glass is lit up orange. Uh, and this is made possible through RGB LEDs mounted all, ar all around the ring, hidden behind the diffuser glass that produce a nice sober light. So orange now means that the camera is booting up. Now the orange LEDs went out and uh, they are replaced by a pulsating green light instead. This is the camera's way of indicating that uh, it's now looking for other cameras on the network and synchronizing to them. In this case, there are not too many other cameras to synchronize with. Uh, so after a couple of seconds, it will realize that and the LED ring will stop being illuminated and instead just light up this corner down here, permanent. So that corner means that it's now online, ready to be used. What I also wanted to show you is how this nicely um, integrates with what we have uh, out in the market already. So if I move over here and I will bring out this guy. So this is a Mikus camera. Here we have that one. And I think you can see some resemblance to, to show that they are part of the same, same family of cameras. On the back here, you also see the same type of connectors, two of them. So what I can do now is simply grab one of the camera cables like this, same connectors, one on each end. And I connect this to the Argus camera. and to the Mikus camera. And now the Mikus works in the same way as the Arcus. So the orange lettering while it's booting, and then it will synchronize with the Arcus camera and be ready to be used in the same systems, or in the same system, using the same cabling, the same power and everything. The same thing wor works with this guy here. So this is a camera sync unit. Uh, it provides a multitude of sync options with external equipment. So here you have output signals. So these can be configured uh, with uh, multiples or uh, divisors of the camera frequency. Uh, these are inputs. You have trigger inputs, you have event inputs, uh, you have sync inputs where you can receive a sync signal in pretty much any frequency that can be divided or multiplied to a frequency that's used the camera system. You can also uh, enter time code here. So uh, SEMPTY or IRIG time code or GenLock due to video sources. And by now you are familiar with this. So the same type of connectors, two of them. So in order to add this to the system, 
I simply grab another cable and I continue the chain. So there we go. So now I have three devices, two cameras, the sync unit, and they all uh, work together. With that said, let me get this out of the way real quick. There we go. Let's continue to look at this fellow right here. So that's with the connectors. Um, on the back, you have also a Kensington lock. And the lock itself uh, can look something like this. And it's very easy to use. You put it in there, you turn the key, and it's locked. So this can be handy to secure uh, the equipment if it's in public places, or perhaps it's hanging overhead uh, a crowd or an audience, and you want some uh, extra security. So those Kensington locks can be uh, bought together with a camera or from, from any uh, IT store, basically. What else do we have? Well, we have a button up here, the black one there. So that is the strobe release button. So what that enables you to do is to very easily access the lens, like I just did here. So the camera I'm holding here now, this is an A12 camera. This one has a motorized lens, so that one allows you to adjust aperture and focus uh, from the software. But for example, if I bring this guy forward here, so this one has a C-mount lens, uh, which has manual aperture and focus, this being an uh, A5. So in this case, it's very uh, useful to be able to open uh, open up here between the housing and the uh, and the lens to easily access it. So there we go. Those were the immediate, immediate features of the camera itself. So now I will swap back to presentation mode and we will continue with looking at the different models that we have available. Now I hope you see my screen. Um, so what we are launching now is four models. Uh, they're called the A5, the A9, the A12, and the A26. To make it easy, uh, the number indicates the amount of megapixels the camera have. And we have some things here worth uh, mentioning. So the A26 is by far the highest resolution motion capture camera that is available out there. It runs up to 150 frames per second in full resolution. We have a 12 megapixel camera that runs up to 300 frames per second in full resolution. Uh, a nine megapixel camera that almost reaches 300. And then we have a five megapixel camera with a whopping 700 frames per second in full resolution. So each of these cameras have their uh, sort of specific uh, use cases. Obvi obviously the uh, very high resolution, res resolution camera is very uh, useful for Small markers on a distance uh, clustered tightly together, while the 5 megapixel and 700 frames per second is very useful for uh, really fast motions, uh, sports, uh, quick drone racing, or and so on. Each camera also has a uh, high-speed mode uh, that sort of further shows their capabilities. Just a quick explanation. The high-speed mode is a way where, uh, by using subsampling, which means that you take every other row and every other column, uh, you get a quarter of the resolution. 
but you get it with a frame rate boost. So this makes, for example, the A5 uh, becomes a one megapixel and a 1400 frames per second camera. And the 12 meg one, with that you get three meg and more than a thousand frames per second. So this is very useful because you do not have to change your setup. The field of view is the same. All cameras also support windowing, which means that you reduce the field of view and then you can get up to 10,000 frames per second. But the high speed mode is particularly useful uh, because you do not change the, the field of view. Here we have the resolution of each camera uh, that also shows the, uh, the aspect ratio that varies from uh, two to one uh, and four, th four, three and one to one aspect ratio. We also indicate 3D resolution, which is basically the smallest motion you can detect on a 10 meter distance with the standard optics. And it correlates very closely to, to resolution. We have worked hard to, to make this the sort of most powerful camera in many aspects, one of them being measurement distances. So the A12, it can see a 16 millimeter marker all the way up to 40 meters distance. Uh, as you know, uh, ambient condition is uh, an important factor. Um, so this would vary depending on, on the setup, but this is what's possible to reach. We are still profiling the nine and the 26 megs. So those numbers we will, uh, we will add quite shortly. Outdoor um, is an important feature uh, for some, and the Arcus is the most refined camera when it comes to outdoor capabilities that we have uh, launched so far. Some of you know that Mikus performs very well outdoors uh, under good circumstances, but the Arcus has a lot of specific features that, uh, that makes that uh, a very suitable camera for, for outdoor usage. Going on, this shows the lens selections that you have, all the, the available optics. So each model, you have three different uh, lens choices to, to choose between. So the standard one uh, is one where we have a good trade-off uh, between field of view and measurement distance. With one, you also have wide lens options for close quarter, uh, where you want to maximize the coverage or narrow lens options for long distance measurements. Also noteworthy here is that the A12 uh, has uh, support for motorized lenses, which means that you can control aperture and focus directly from the software. Also highlighting the the unique cabling system that we that we utilize. Uh, so these two sketches, they show the Arcus and the Miku setup. And as you can see, they work in exactly the same way. So from the computer, you simply have one ethernet cable to a power injector, the small box I showed previously, and then you add cameras in the chain. So here you can mix both Arcus and Miku's cameras, sensing units. And one power supply can power up to five cameras in an Arcus system. For the sixth one, you add additional power and you continue, continue the chain. Mikus works in the same way, but there a power supply can power up to, to 10 cameras. And this reduces the amount of cables uh, heavily. Anywhere from 60 to 80% uh, is, is saved by using daisy chaining compared to your, your standard star network. Now let's dive into the arc is protected. Uh, I do this by, by listing a number of features that are useful for outdoor usage. Uh, so active tracking is, is one such thing. Uh, it's useful for long distance measurement. It also has some other benefits uh, in, in specific applications and uh, all our models support active tracking. So both Megas, the standard Arcus cameras and the protected ones. They're all daisy chained. 
that's something you expect from a quality system. All of them also support active filtering. And this is something that has been available for the plus series of, of, uh, of seven, six, and five cameras. Uh, and it's now also added to the Mikus series of cameras uh, as of this uh, fall. It's also built into the Arcus camera. And it's, um, it's an hardware operation uh, that allows the camera to subtract the background from the images before a uh, marker calculations is applied. And this dramatically increases the chances or, uh, of success when, when measuring at uh, very sunny conditions. To further improve this, we've also uh, used sun filters. So a sun filter is a narrow bandpass filter that you attach to the lens. Uh, that also helps a great deal uh, when measuring in strong sunlight. So this is an add-on to uh, all Arcus cameras but it's included with an Arcus protected camera. Moving further, uh, the protected versions uh, are natively waterproof and dustproof. Uh, and standards are IP67. Uh, the six indicates the amount of protection against dust, which, and then a six there means completely dustproof. The seven relates to water and indicates that it's capable of being submerged in shallow water for a brief period of time. Uh, the use case for this is uh, outdoor usage, obviously, uh, and even, even permanent outdoor mounting, where rain and snow uh, is, is dealt with. Uh, the equivalent of EP67 is uh, with using the NEMA, NEMA standard, NEMA 6. One new thing that I think is appreciated by many, uh, it's that we've extended the temperature range that is supported by the protected version of the Arcus camera. So standard cameras range from zero to 35 degrees centigrade, while the protected version uh, goes all the way down to minus 15 degrees and all the way up to plus 45 degrees centigrade. This corresponds to between 513 degrees Fahrenheit. So this obviously extends the uh, number of environments where you can use motion capture. And outdoors is a given, but also uh, there are indoor scenarios where the 35 degrees just doesn't cut it. An extra 10 degrees on the high side there really helps. Finally, the protected cameras have uh, industrial grade connectors. Uh, so they are obviously uh, waterproof, uh, but they also have a heavy duty design to them to make them survive in, in uh, environments where, uh, where a standard connector might not do very well. With that said, let me switch on the webcam again. And I will show you what the protected camera looks like. So here we go. So there are two uh, immediate things that stand out from a standard Arcus. One is the back. You see the two connectors, as you would expect, but of a different kind. The same goes with the cables. So this is what a connector looks like. Um, if you have used an Oka system in the past, uh, they look kind of the same. And what I simply do is push it in like that. And to get it out, I just pull. So these are real nice, heavy duty. Uh, they survive most of the abuse uh, that you may, uh, that they may receive. And obviously these uh, connectors are sealed. Uh, we have O-rings and seals in all the uh, all the different places here, uh, where you have mechanical parts that go together. And we have this pipe in the middle uh, that's there to protect the lens. What is good with this is that uh, it's quite easy to access uh, the lens itself. For those of you that have used Ocus in the past, uh, you know that it's a bit of work to access the lens. 
uh, on an IP67 protected version of the Oculus camera. For this one, however, I simply push the strobe release. I'm able to pull the strobe out. The same goes for this one. So this is uh, sealed underneath here. But what this allows me to do is to easily access the lens for adjustments. But also, if I if I want to run indoors for some time and don't bother with this cover, that's easily achievable. And it goes back the same way. So there we go. Now it's sealed. What is also included in this in the protected camera is a sun filter. It comes uh, in the package next to the camera. And to attach this, I pull the strobe out and I screw the, screw the filter on to the front of the lens. There we go. Quick and simple. So what the sun filter does is that it blocks out the majority of, uh, of light outside of the strobe range. Uh, what you do lose is something like 20% of, uh, of the measurement distance, 20% of the strobe light. But it helps great in, in uh, challenging outdoor environments. Okay, let me switch back. And I will now talk briefly about the different kind of cameras that we, that we offer, the different type of platforms and what could be right for you. So we start with the uh, with the environment. So do you want to go outdoors, and you want not just want to do that on a you know nice uh, sunny day, but you also want to do that when it's raining, snowing, uh, in dusty environments. You should definitely go with the Arcus protected. Um, if you need the extended temperature range, the same there. Uh, the protected camera is, is the one for you. Or if you want industrial grade connectors. If we move on and you have a scenario where you really need uh, long measurement distances that comes from high resolution and a powerful strobe, or you want to uh, mesh from really small markers, then Arcus is your choice. Do you need high frame rates uh, to capture very fast motions? Is the club head of a, a golf club or other really fast motions? Then the Arcus family of cameras is, is where you should look. But perhaps you want to maximize the number of cameras uh, than you can get. You want as much uh, viewpoints as, as possible because you have five or eight people uh, interacting and you want to capture their motions. Or if you want a small camera for the really tight, tight spaces, or perhaps you're on a budget, then Meek is, uh, is the choice of cameras. So no matter what you're looking for, we have uh, a camera for you and ranging from one megapixel to 26 megapixels for any kind of uh, environment. Looking at availability, the Arcus, they will start shipping to customers uh, by September. And we have already included support in the latest uh, release of QTM. So 2020.2 was released uh, about a week ago. Uh, that includes Arcus support. So with that said, I've used up the 30 minutes. Um, and I thank you very much for uh, attending. We have all previous webinars available on our website under qualisys.com webinars. Uh, 
also please uh, remember uh, that Q Academy has a lot of resources uh, that is uh, very interesting and perhaps especially useful in, in these days. Uh, with that said, this concludes our 12th uh, webinar uh, over the past months. And uh, I thank you very much for attending. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to email, email either myself or call directly or uh, your, your sales contact. We'll stay on the line uh, for a couple of more minutes to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, and if you come up with anything down the, ro down the road, just send us an email. So with that said, thank you very much for attending and uh, have a good summer.